Hey, this is Nick with another Builder Trend tutorial for you. This one is short but sweet. I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite newer features of Builder Trend, which is specifications. It's a really simple feature, all right, but it's really, really powerful and it helps to solve a just crucial nagging issue within projects, which is people not knowing what the heck to do and not knowing what the project's all about. I use specifications to solve that problem. I wanna share my exact process for doing that with you as well. So specifications, it's in the project management tab. It provides a single source of truth for your scope of work, additional contract terms, change order process and pricing, internal notes, really anything, all right? Now we talked about templates in a previous video. It's an amazing place to do templates too. So if you have quality control standards, you have job access standards, you have anything that you do often that makes sense to document in one single place for your internal team to see and then sometimes your customer to see as well, we're gonna put that in the specifications area and we're gonna talk about that all today in the short but sweet video on Builder Trend. So let's get after it, let's get into Builder Trend. So specification is gonna show up you see on my left side of my screen here, under project management, specifications right there. This is relatively new, probably within the last two years or so as I'm recording this, all right? And it's really simple as far as the technical, like what happens with it. It's not linked to anything, which might change in the future, but I don't really think it needs to be. Basically, you click new specification and you just start typing. And let me just do an example here. And you do a title for it. And you can write things out, you can bullet point, you can do all sorts of marking up as well, okay? You can add pictures, you can add links, you can add all sorts of things. We save and close that, that's gonna show up as a single line item here. We have the date it was modified as well, okay? Now, I can share this with an owner or subs if I, ch if I choose to, okay? And we will do that, all right? I'm gonna show you how I typically will set these up. Okay, I'm gonna delete that one. What I do, the first thing I wanna do in my specifications is have the scope of work in there. Now I'm always going to attach in the file section a, a formal proposal that we have, but I found that my crew never reads it. They don't wanna look into it, and so we want a really easy way for them to find it. If you're looking on the right side of my screen, this is kind of what our proposals can look like. They're very long, all right? They're, this one's 17 pages, this is on the short side, right? Now nested within this is a really detailed scope of work, but I'd like to separate that out a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna click new specification. I'm gonna separate this out into my kind of little you know, categories of work here. So, and I'm gonna actually number them because I want to order them the right way. So I'm gonna do number one, I'm gonna do prep, preliminaries, and project management. Okay, now I could have copied and pasted that. I'm gonna copy and paste this here. All right, goes in really nice and easy. Okay, we just find the project area there. I'm gonna save and close that. Now, I didn't have to do any saving yet, or I mean sharing yet, I will soon. New specification, I'm just gonna do a little bit more copying and pasting. Now, this is really easy, but it's also a really good task that you can have an admin, certainly a project management assistant do, a VA, somebody like that. It's a really good way too for these folks to start learning what the project is all about. All right, uh, now I did not label this one. I wanna number them. So if you number them, um, it's going to help from a sorting perspective, okay? Because I'd like to have these things in order. So I got prep and preliminaries, I got demolition. This is gonna be three framing and rough-ins, okay? And again, the scope of work, they could have easily grabbed the document, but my guys aren't doing that, right? And I find it just easier for me sometimes too to go and find uh, this detailed scope of work. All right, there's framing and rough-ins. Next is exterior. Not much on this one. And of course, your projects are gonna be a little bit different. You could, and this is actually what we do, is you could templatize this a little bit and have these sections already existing and then just, just fill out the text. So I'm not creating new ones, I'm just editing the existing ones. All right, five is gonna be drywall. All right. putting in our scope of work. This is gonna take me less than two minutes to do. And six, flooring and tile. And seven. Carpentry and finish. Now the scope of work is not the only thing that this is used for. This is a really important thing, but not the only thing. Put that in there. 
Okay, awesome. Now the other thing is assumptions and clarifications. Let's put that in there too. Appendix, we can just do Appendix A, assumptions, clarifications. Okay, so this could be a place where, you know, maybe the homeowner's like, hey, I thought they had an assumption about that somewhere. Where was that? All right, we can put that in there. We can do another one for our allowances. Now we're gonna have allowances in our uh, selections, which we're gonna have a separate video on, but this is just a really quick place to see it. Now, my internal crew, they're not necessarily seeing the numbers in the allowances, so um, so they're not like going into the specifications on the selections themselves, but just seeing this list is useful to them. Now this is a situation where you might wanna use the image, so why don't I go ahead and do that? I'll go ahead and grab this, and then I'll do uh, upload an image, It'll show up here, I just took a screenshot. There it is. We can just put it in like that. Awesome, all right? Now everything I've done so far, I want this to be available to my homeowner. So I'm gonna select all of it, and I'm gonna click share, and owners can view it, subs can view it as well, okay? Now if I look, if I, um, I just refresh this for a sec, okay? Um, I guess I don't have a homeowner on this one yet, so I can't preview it for them yet, but they're gonna be able to see that stuff. Now, there are some items that we might not want them to see, okay? This could be quality control. One of them is labor markup. So one thing that we do is we have our change order process, okay? So, and we have these labor rates. Now, these labor rates, I do want my um, my customer to see, okay? This makes complete sense. Um, I've communicated this with them already. I want them to be able to um, see these rates. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there, okay? That's fine for them to see. However, there's a markup on this. And so if I ever have to create an invoice and I take the cost of my labor, which is less than this, right? It might cost me you know, $50 an hour to have a lead carpenter, but I mark it up to get to the 85. I have a little cheat sheet to help me get there. So right here is an example of that. I've got my roll, here's my cost, and here's my markup. Okay, to give me my hourly rate. And this is something that I'm gonna use internally so that when myself or somebody on my team is doing an invoice and they need to know like, all right, we have the lead carpenter with a bunch of hours, we know what they cost us, how much are we marking them up on this project to get to this hourly rate? And this could be really, really useful. So again, everything here so far, we want it to be uh, shareable to the owners. Okay, great. But some of these, we don't necessarily want them to be. So this could be internal labor pricing, okay? And I can maybe take a screenshot of this, paste it in here, and that is going to be useful for me or anybody else on my team when we're doing invoicing to know how much are we actually marking these folks up. So really what this is, this is a place for information, okay? And what you can do is establish just a really strong Here's where you come to figure out the rules of the project, the guidelines of the project. I mentioned quality control, access to the property. How are we accessing the property? What are the days and times we can come? Is there a dog to be considerate of? Is there a fence situation? What do we have to know? Is there a neighbor we have to be worried about? Okay, all of that can go into specifications and we have one single source of truth. Here is where we come to really learn about what are we doing on this project. We have plenty of other details elsewhere. We have estimates and budgets elsewhere. We have to-dos and schedules elsewhere. But this, at the end of the day, is a higher level. If we accomplish this, we've accomplished the project. And this is what we want to do, all right? I've been using specifications a lot lately, and it's a really cool thing to do. Again, easily templatized as well. All of these can be templatized, especially your assumptions, your labor rates, any of that stuff that is repeatable from project to project. Save it to your template and deploy it on every project you use, right? Do not pass over the specifications area within uh, Builder Trend and maybe use it for something else. I mean, what I'm doing is just kind of an example. As you can see, it's relatively free form. There's many different things you could do for it. In fact, I'd love to hear from you if you want to comment on how you found the specifications area useful or maybe you have any suggestions for how they might improve it. I know it's new and Builder Trend is really, really good at listening to our feedback. And so um, if we can provide that, that'd be really useful as well. All right. Interested to hear what you have to say and really excited to see you on the next video within this series. I'll see you there.